The Grace of Kings, without a doubt one of the best first books I've ever read in the series, but also one of the most challenging books to recommend to any fantasy reader. Now let's talk about The Grace of Kings and make sure to stick to the end where I'll talk about my number one favorite thing about this whole book, and no, it's not characterizations or even world building. But firstly, if you're wondering why I'm not in my library, it's simply because I'm too lazy to move it, and I've also felt a bit under the weather, so I just don't have the energy to move everything around. But I promise, for the next video, you will have the books in the background again. <laughs> But firstly, let's start with why I'm having a challenging time to recommend this book to a lot of readers before in the second half of this video I'm going to talk about why this has become one of my new favorite books. Firstly, why is it challenging to recommend The Grace of Kings? Just briefly about this book. Now this book focuses on this brewing rebellion against this massive empire and it tells the story of how this rebellion is born and then how it spreads across this massive world. Now that is a very rough synopsis, but, but that is basically what this book is about. Now, why why do I say it's challenging to recommend The Grace of Kings? Well, first and foremost, the way the plot in this book is structured is so, so different from anything I've ever read before. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe this book covers around 20 years of history or something like that. It is absolutely insane how much ground is covered, and in a lot of ways, this whole like 650 page book almost reads like a massive prologue. It reads like Ken Liu, he's literally just setting things up in this book and is informing you about what has happened in the past to actually be able to tell you the story that he wants to tell. Now, does that make any sense? I mean, this book reads like it's not the main story of this massive series due to how focused it is on telling this massive story over a long period of time. Now, let me just give you an example to illustrate this point. Now, imagine this. If you were in history class and the teacher had a massive map of the Roman Empire, for example, and then the teacher, he went on to tell you about the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. And he would then go over to the map and he would say, well, the conflict started here and in this battle, this and this person was killed, which led to it two years later, this leader ris arising in this part of the map, and so on and so on. Now think about that image of this historian going to this map and explaining the story of the Roman Empire. Now basically, that is what the Grace of Kings reads like. It is like looking down on this big map and then someone is telling you who the major players are, what their role are, and how they either died or conquered different regions, and so on and so on, which makes this for quite a dense reading experience. Now, the way Ken Liu is telling the story is absolutely fascinating, but it also means that this book almost reads like a history book where the characters aren't as important as the story, and I don't think I'm wrong in stating, this is a very plot-driven story. Yes, we do get introduced to some really phenomenal characters, but they are not the important things about this story. The important thing that Ken Liu wants to tell in this book is that there is a rebellion brewing, and then we learn a lot more about this rebellion. So basically, if you are a fan of character-driven stories, then you might have a hard time here. And then, as I already mentioned, this book reads like a 600 page prologue, which is so different from anything I've ever read before. Now, in some ways, this reads almost like a Malassan kind of book, but it's just much, much easier to follow. And then secondly, and this is not necessarily a criticism, but this story is told through a third person omniscient point of view. And as I mentioned previously, you have this narrator looking down and it's kind of this all seeing and all knowing of what the characters think or do and I know a lot of people really don't like that way of someone telling a story but I'm telling you guys third person omniscient works so well in this book but I just thought I should mention that if you're an absolutely hater of that kind of way of telling a story now why do I still claim that this is one of my favorite books of the year and poten potentially one of my all-time favorite books well firstly let's touch on this straight away but that is the counterpoint for why some people might not enjoy how the story is told over such a big period and that is this since almost every chapter in this book jumps ahead in time and to a new conflict, you literally have no idea who is going to make it or not. It's not like your typical fantasy which will glorify someone's deaths and draw it out for hundreds of pages. I mean, you literally have chapters in here 
where you are introduced to a new character and you will follow this person's journey for maybe 20 or 30 pages and then you will start to care for them and you might even start to think this will be one of the key players in this book and often in this book the answer to that is no, that is not a main character. I mean Ken Liu, he will frequently introduce a new character make you love this character and then maybe only 100 pages later kill that character. It is absolutely brutal. But that made it so that I literally had no idea who would make it or not in the story because almost every single chapter had a significant person being killed. The tension was so real, but not because you had invested thousands and thousands of pages into this one character, but because this world truly feels real and brutal as our world is during warfare. I mean, even some of the main, main characters in this book do not even survive the grace of kings, which is just mad. I mean, how fascinating is that? And you know, I truly respect Ken Liu for writing a story like this, because Ken Liu, he does not utilize Deus Ex Machina at all, which I just loved. Now, secondly, the world building in this book is some of the most exciting and fresh I've come across in recent times. Firstly, this world feels so, so massive, but this book is described as silk punk, which I'm not even 100% sure what that means, but you're basically in this world that feels like an Asian inspired world, maybe 500 years ago, but then you also have air balloons and you have metal detectors and a lot of these so-called steampunk inventions you would have back in the day, which makes for a really fascinating reading experience because this fantasy world just feels so different. Also, the creatures in this book are amazing, and yes, you do have some magic, but at least for the Grace of Kings, the fantastical elements are not being focused on as much as a lot of other fantasy books. And regarding the world building, Ken Liu does a incredible job at fleshing out the different cultures in each area of this massive world, which again, just really allows you to get so immersed in the story. Now, the third and primary thing I love about this book is not what you would maybe expect, but it was the analysis of themes. The Grace of Kings without a doubt has some really strong themes going throughout the whole book, which are primarily the themes of power, corruption, and what I love the most, the analysis of how easy it is to tear things down compared to building things up from the ground. Now, people often have a tendency to rebel against the government for various reasons, and very often those reasons are 100% justified. But very often, institutions are set up in a society for specific reasons, and often not for the reasons that people think. Now, The Grace of Kings really shows that sometimes leaders, when building up society with the best intentions, they sometimes implement things that actually hurt a lot of people, but sometimes that is not something that was intentional. Now this book almost reads like a warning to people that just want to tear everything down in society and it begs the question, do you have enough understanding of why things are the way they are? And more importantly, if you tear something down, will you actually be able to build it up again in a better way? Now, let me make it clear. The Grace of Kings doesn't state that rebellions are 100% evil. I mean, definitely not. It just asks the reader to think about what it is you are tearing down before you do so. Now, secondly, the analysis of human nature is masterfully done, and especially the aspects of how all humans are walking contradictions. I mean, I haven't read that many novels that seem to understand that aspect of humans and how humans tend to contradict them all the times as well as this book does. And just overall, Ken Liu seems to understand how humans rationalize decision making ever so well. I mean, these characters to humanity is really heightened in this book, which I truly appreciate. Now, I've heard that book 2 in the series gets more focus on some characters, and a lot of people praise Wall of Storms as being one of the best books they've ever read, so I absolutely can't wait to read it. Now, I would love to hear from you. I mean, have you read this book, or are you planning on giving it a read? Definitely let me know your thoughts, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and a special thanks to my patrons for support what I do here, I really appreciate it.